I'd like to thank everyone for joining me to uh, A Beginner's Guide to CHIP. My name is David Grotsky. I'm the epigenetics specialist in scientific supported ABCAM for the Americas. I'd now like to start by introducing you to CHIP. Chromatin immunoprecipitation, or CHIP, is the selective enrichment of a chromatin fraction containing a specific antigen. This antigen is a specific protein of interest, and you enrich for this protein bound to DNA by pulling it down using an antibody. CHIP allows you to study gene regulation by determining the localization of a protein of interest, for instance, a transcription factor in the genome at all of its binding sites and under specific conditions, such as different disease states or treatments. You can also compare enrichments of a protein or protein modification, such as a histone modification at different loci. You can map the location of a protein of interest across an entire locus, and you can quantify a protein or protein modification at an inducible gene over a time course. Of course, for CHIP, the starting template is chromatin, which is a protein and DNA complex whose basic function is higher order packaging of DNA into the nucleus. If all 3.2 billion base pairs of DNA in the human genome were unraveled, it would stretch to around five feet long so chromatin allows all of the DNA to fit inside the nucleus. Chromatin is also extremely important in regulation of gene transcription. The most basic unit of chromatin is the nucleosome, which consists of DNA wound around a core of eight histone proteins. The nucleosome core consists of approximately 147 base pairs of DNA wrapped around the octamer made up of two copies each of histones H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. Histone H1 sits on top of this structure to keep the wrapped DNA in place. More relaxed chromatin is termed euchromatin, which tends to be gene-rich due to its open and accessible structure. As chromatin condenses further and further, it becomes what is called heterochromatin, which contains repressed and silent loci, as well as repetitive elements. Finally, there is even higher level packaging to form metaphase chromosomes during mitosis. Here are classic electron micrographs showing what chromatin looks like with the distinctive beads on a string structure on the left and more compacted chromatin on the right. Now here's a closer up view of the nucleosome core with the eight histone molecules and DNA tightly wrapped around it. The diameter of a nucleosome is around 10 nanometers and histones are unique in that they have N-terminal tails that stick out from the nucleosome core whose residues are targeted for modifications that play different roles in the regulation of chromatin structure and therefore affect gene transcription. Histone modifications, along with DNA methylation, are the main epigenetic mechanisms that control gene transcription. When a gene is switched on and transcription is possible, the chromatin is open and relaxed so that transcription factors and other binding elements can bind freely to promoters. When a gene is switched off and transcription is impeded, the chromatin structure is condensed so that these factors can't bind to the DNA. Here is a diagram of some of the different modifications that occur on the histone tails. Histones H3 and H4 are the most commonly modified histones whose residues are targeted for acetylation methylation, phosphorylation, deimination, and ubiquitination. Acetylation is generally associated with gene activation and occurs mostly at promoter regions, while different and specific methylation modifications are involved with either gene activation or repression by relaxing or condensing chromatin. For example, di and trimethylation of H3K4 and monomethylation of H3K9 are associated with activation, whereas di and trimethylation of H3K27 and trimethylation of H3K9 are associated with repression. Deimination occurs when an arginine residue is converted to a citrulline residue. Phosphorylation has roles in DNA repair, transcriptional regulation, and chromosome condensation, and ubiquitination appears to play a role in DNA repair. I'd like to focus a bit more on acetylation and methylation, 
as these modifications are most commonly studied by CHIP. Acetylation occurs on lysine residues, and there are specific enzymes that add or remove acetyl groups to lysines, histone acetyltransferases and histone deacetylases, respectively. On the right, you can see a representative CHIP experiment using an H3K27 acetyl antibody. This antibody specifically recognizes histone H3 when it's acetylated at lysine 27. Here, we pulled down DNA that was bound to this histone modification and performed qPCR using primers for several different loci to determine where the modification is located. You can see that this modification is located at promoters of genes that are constitutively active, such as GAPDH, RPL30, and ALDO-A, which we expect since acetylation is associated with gene activation. We can also see that this modification is not present at inactive genes, which we also expect. Similarly for methylation, there are enzymes that add or remove methyl groups to lysines and arginines, histone methyltransferases, and histone demethylases. On the right, I'm showing a chip experiment using an antibody specific for histone H3 when it's trimethylated at lysine 9. We find this modification present at inactive genes such as MyoD and Serpina, as well as at heterochromatin, while you can see that it's mostly absent from active loci. Of course, CHIP isn't only for histone proteins. You can also use CHIP to analyze the location of transcription factors or other DNA binding proteins. Here's a cartoon of RNA polymerase II, which sits at the promoter along with transcription factors and moves along the DNA as transcription progresses. If you perform CHIP to see where RNA polymerase II binds, you can see strong binding at active promoters, such as those of GAPDH and gamma-actin, and you can see the polymerase along the entire gamma actin gene as transcription progresses. As expected, RNA polymerase is not detected at inactive genes. 